What's up, Frigate Chasers? This video is a how-to for the dry Tortugas crossing with your own boat or private vessel. Some may call it the Ford Jefferson crossing. We made the crossing during our 2020 trip on our 27-foot Sea Hunt game fish. This video will eventually be accompanied with a very informative ebook that Captain Poopy Pants is working on. Link for the ebook will be available down below when it is ready, but until then, I will include a link to a very brief, bare bones PDF that covers everything we discuss in this video. There are a few ways to take a day trip or even spend a few nights camping out at the Dry Tortugas. The most popular way is to take the Yankee Freedom Ferry, which is a large, fully equipped catamaran that can carry tons of tourists, camping equipment, and kayaks. The Yankee Freedom departs daily from downtown Key West and books to capacity months ahead. If you are a thrill seeker, you may decide to take the seaplane. The seaplane departs from Key West International Airport and lands on the water right in front of Fort Jefferson. We have done both. The Yankee Freedom and the seaplane. Both are a fine way for visitors to reach Fort Jefferson, but if you want the freedom of your own boat to visit many dive locations, do some fishing, or visit Loggerhead Key, then keep watching. Quick disclaimer, we are not professionals, just a few friends learning and loving the ocean. If you find this video helpful in any way, please give it a like, as this is the best way to show support for your favorite creators. I'm sure there are many locations in the Florida Keys to launch your boat and park your truck and trailer long term, but we started our trip in Tampa. If you know of any such locations in the Keys or have advice for those making the crossing, please add them in the comment section below. We trailered the boat to Marco Island and put in its safe harbor Calusa Island Marina, where we launched and parked the truck and trailer long term. Marina website will be listed below. When you arrive, pull up to the staging area to prep your boat. Someone should come out to greet you, take your money, and show you where to park. Fees at the time were $15 for the ramp fee and $15 a day for parking. From the staging area, you can throw it in reverse and back right into the boat ramp. Nothing tricky about these ramps, they are top notch. The tricky part from here is deciding how to get out to sea. Navionics shows two different routes for a shallow draft boat. One is the north way up through Whiskey Creek and out Marco Pass. The other is the south way, which takes you through Coon Key Pass, through Gallivan Bay, and out. But we took half of the south route and then cut across the shallows to a different set of markers. Just kind of picking our way through, I guess. Not sure if we were lost, making it up as we go, or just feeling crazy, but it gets super shallow through there, as in three foot crazy, which makes us very nervous. Not sure the exact route we took, but we did see the Cape Roman dome houses on exit. I think next time we will go the north route just to be safe. Once out to sea, it is about 120 miles to the first markers at Fort Jefferson. The markers to Fort Jefferson circle around the north side of the fort and come in from the west into the south side of the fort. The Frigate Chaser is a 27-foot Sea Hunt game fish with twin Yamaha 200s. She has a 179-gallon tank with an average fuel consumption at just over 2 miles a gallon. We took four 5-gallon jerry cans with us on the trip so we could refuel once we arrived. And we wished we would have taken more. The water was very smooth on the way out, making for a smooth ride. Good thing, because we were delayed thanks to a highway emergency. Picked up some tires and on the water mid-afternoon. Four and a half hours later, we arrived at Fort Jefferson and the Dry Tortugas just minutes before sundown. Typically, you would pull right up into the fort, check in with a ranger, and pay your dues. We tried the ranger station on the radio, but they didn't answer. Didn't figure they would, so we anchored up in Bird Key Harbor for the night. First thing in the morning, we made our way for Fort Jefferson to get checked in. When arriving, you will see signs on a few of the docks stating that they are used for immediate loading and unloading only. These docks have a two-hour limit, so if you plan to unload for camping, you need to move fast, as you also need to pay your camping fees and check in with the ranger first. 
you definitely do not pull up to the big dock as it is reserved for the Yankee Freedom. For sure, pay your camping fees first. If not, the ranger may choose to make fun of you as there are signs everywhere telling you to pay first thing. And if you have a camera mounted on a stick, they might also make fun of you for that. That's a whole other story, but for the most part, the rangers are laid back and very friendly. You will find a pay station on the big dock near the changing rooms, cash or check only. Fees include. The entrance fee for the Dry Tour Tugas National Park is $15 per person and is good for seven consecutive days. Individual campsites are $15 per night per site and group campsites are $30 per night. Your next step is to check in with the ranger. The ranger station is located inside the fort to the right of the drawbridge. If no one is available, just check the gift store. Once a ranger is located, they will go over all of the rules and regulations with you and your crew, let you know where you can and can't fish, let you know where you can and can't anchor. Lots of info to take in there, so pay attention. If you plan on camping on the island, let the ranger know and ask where you can leave your boat. Odds are they will let you bimini anchor on Dingy Beach. Just don't use the pre-anchored ropes at the east end of the beach. These are reserved for the seaplanes. Don't be that guy. After that, you are free to roam. Things to know. You are required to use the composting toilets located here when the Yankee Freedom is away. When the Yankee Freedom is at dock, the composting toilets are locked and everyone is required to use the head on the Yankee Freedom. The Yankee Freedom will sell you lunch and ice, which is very nice, but all campers and visitors are expected to bring everything they need and take everything with them when they leave, including all trash. So expect to ride back to land with a few trash bags on board once you have your gas cans empty, you can store them in your campground, but check with the ranger on this as I'm sure ideas about where to store fuel cans may vary from ranger to ranger. You cannot spear fish in the protected boundaries of the Dry Tortugas. We did have spear guns with us as we went to Marathon for a week this trip as well. So we just stored the spear guns in the campsite so there were no questions if boarded. And we did get boarded. Follow the rules, kids. It's not worth it. I will put links for more info about camping and boating regulations in the comments down below. If you would like to see a video specifically on camping or fishing regulations, let us know. We'll see if we can make that happen. We will for sure be making videos soon about our diving and fishing adventures, as well as an educational fort tour. So subscribe for more. If this info was at all helpful, please give the video a like. If you are interested in helping support this channel, we will have info for that below. Links for things like safety equipment, weather apps, and associate links will also be below. If you are currently a Patreon member, you will have gotten this video long before the YouTube release date. So thanks patrons. Glad to have you on Team Frigate Chaser. Music in this video is provided by Epidemic Sound, so check them out. All comments are read and appreciated, and most questions are answered, so hit us up in that comment section. Frigate out.